Hi. So in this video, we're going to continue to talk about RAS, uh, how it's a regu how it's regulated, and its role in cancer. So again, it plays a central role in the RAS RAF mech ERK pathway, as we covered in previous videos. And so here, we're going to see how RAF activity is regulated and how it is dysregulated in human cancers. So uh, previously, we spoke about how RAS it can exist uh, bound to GDP or it bound to GTP. And when it's bound to GTP, that is the uh, pro-growth version of RAS. That will, you can think of it as the on version of RAS. It stimulates growth of the cell, sends signals into the nucleus uh, through a signal transduction pathway, which we'll cover in later videos, to get the cell to go through the cell cycle. And this is accomplished by guanine nucleotide exchange, uh, proteins such as SOS, uh, which will exchange GDP to GTP. That's great. Well, RAS needs to be reset back to its GDP bound form. You can't leave RAS with GTP on it all the time or else uh, cells will think it's always time to go through the cell cycle. So RAS has to be reset. Uh, and the half-life of RAS bound with GTP is about 15 to 30 minutes. It actually will go back to its GDP bound form within that time. So it resets itself so that when the cell finishes going through the cell cycle, it's back to RAS has GDP bound for, on it, and then, and then it's just waiting for another pro-growth signal, let's say from uh, growth factors. So how does RAS go back to uh, having GDP on it? So we talked about in previous videos how you go from GDP to GTP. Now how do you go back? Well, if you think about it, there's one very simple way to make it go back. Remove that phosphate, right? You got three phosphates in the G GTP, you got two phosphates in the GDP, just take off a phosphate, and that's exactly what happens. An enzyme called a GTPase breaks down GTP, removes that phosphate. So that's how you reset RAS. It seems pretty simple. So what's the GTPase? Does it have a name? Yeah, and actually this part people find a little bit confusing, but that's okay. RAS is a GTPase. In fact, it is the GTPase that removes its T its phosphate from its own GTP. So RAS, after it gets GTP put on it and it stimulates some pro-growth signals, it'll eventually take off that terminal phosphate to reset itself. So RAS is like a self-regulating enzyme. It gets uh, GTP put on it, takes off that phosphate, now it's got GDP. Then it'll get exchanged, GTP gets put on it, take off that phosphate, goes back. So RAS, is a GTPase and it will regulate the, itself by removing that terminal phosphate to reset itself back to the uh, non-pro-growth sort of off non-stimulatory version, RAS GDP. So RAS does it, uh, itself. It does get some help with another uh, protein called a GAP. There's families of protein. Uh, GAPs are GTPase activating proteins. So RAS uh, is a GTPase but it works much better in the presence of a GAP protein. So GAPs will help stimulate RAS's GTPase activity, helping RAS reset itself. But again, RAS is a GTPase. And it's very important to understand this because we're gonna talk about mutations in human cancers, and it's important to understand the GTPase activity. So now let's talk about RAS in cancer. RAS is very commonly dysregulated in human cancers. So we've talked about RAS and we've uh, alluded to its pro-growth function. So when RAS is bound to GTP, it's going to stimulate signals into the cell. And we'll talk about those in later videos. Um, it can stimulate the MEC, RAF mec erg pathway. It can stimulate the PI3 kinase AKT pathway. And we'll get to those later. So uh, in many human cancers, RAS is stuck with GTP on it very often. How? Two, two, two main reasons. One, are mutations in genes that control upstream signals, signals upstream of RAS. What do we mean upstream of RAS? The things that control RAS, for example, growth factor receptors, also known as receptor tyrosine kinases. If these uh, receptors, for, for example, the EGF receptor family, if they are amplified and overexpressed, if there are point mutations that are activating point mutations, then these receptors will be phosphorylated very often. And if they are, then you have a constant exchange of GDP for GTP by sauce. 
And if this is the case, RAS is constantly bound with GTP and pro-growth signals are propagating to the cell and the cells are going through the cell cycle very often. So mutations upstream of RAS could put RAS in its pro-growth state. The second category of mutations are mutations in RAS. So the RAS gene could be mutated, giving you a defective RAS protein. So what kind of mutation do you think could be present in RAS? I'll tell you it's a point mutation, but when you have mutations in proteins, uh, those mutations could activate the protein or they can disable the protein. So what do you think of this mutation would do to the enzymatic activity of RAS? Remember, RAS is a GTPase. So when it is, if it's mutated and that mutation affects its GTPase activity, is it going to uh, make its GATPase activity always active or make its GTPase activity always inactive? All right. Remember, RAS needs to convert GTP back to GDP so to reset itself. So hopefully you've realized that mutations in RAS, right? Uh, point mutations, especially around uh, amino acid 12 or 13, um, abolish RAS's GTPase activity. So if the, its GTPase activity is abolished, then guess what? Can't remove that terminal phosphate, can't go back into its GDP bound form, it is stuck with GTP. And if RAS is stuck with GTP, then it is constantly telling the cell to go through the cell cycle. So point mutations in RAS abolish its enzyme activity. So this is different than, for example, point mutations we see there in the receptor tyrosine kinase. Point mutations in EGFR make its kinase activity always active. Point mutations in RAS make its GTPase activity always inactive. So you got to really know some mutations activate things, some mutations abolish things. Here, point mutation in RAS abolishes its enzyme activity and keeps it in a pro-growth state. So you got to keep track of a lot of things here. But that's okay. I think you can do it. So RAS is an oncogene. It is a, when it is mutated, it is promoting growth of cancer cells. And in more than 20% of human cancers, RAS is mutated, right? And so a RAS mutation is going to abolish its GTPase activity, leaving it constantly bound with GTP, which constantly stimulates pro-growth and pro-survival pathways, which we'll cover in later videos. Things like the PI3 kinase AKT pathway and the raf mec erc pathway. So hopefully you have a good appreciation of RAS and how it's regulated and how it is mutated in often in human cancers.